got it, you know? Is he done, huh? That works pretty well. And scene. <laughs> so uh jim and i we are baby free this weekend we had a babysitter so we decided to hop in the motorboat okay injury and uh hopped in the motorboat when we were on lake tomogamy and um you know bombed out to a beautiful campsite here we're in the uh north west arm and camped out last night today we went for a nice little drive and went fishing we got jim got a nice bass and a nice pike so we're here back at the campsite we just uh, got the fire going and we're jim's gonna clean the fish and we're gonna have a nice little lunch so i'm looking forward to that Here for today is an old style Pilsner. Good beer for the price, I'd say. It's like a seat in my office. It is a very low seat. You got it. <laughs> Ow, I hurt my hand. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do the um, five cut method. A lot of people don't like pike because it's really bony. Some people just get kind of squeamish over bones. A lot of people do actually, um, including my wife, Tori. <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you get a good spring pike, so this is like, you know, late spring right now. And it's a really clear lake here, Tomogamy, clean, clear lake. I caught it not even anywhere close to any weedy water. Um, so it should be a really tasty pike and actually this pike will probably taste better than a walleye or pickerel caught out of a more weedy lake. Um, great way to clean the bigger ones is where you take the fillets off and then you cut the Y bone. But for these smaller ones, it's more challenging. So I, I like to use something called the, uh, five cut technique. Now this is actually a technique that I just thought up on my own when I first started catching pike and it turned out it's a technique that everyone uses. So you've probably already thought about doing this yourself. Uh, but basically it's five cuts. So we're gonna cut down through the top, along the spine, and then right at the front of this dorsal fin, we're gonna take that piece off, take the skin off, and then we're gonna cut the side fillets off from the top. And that way we're gonna be able to stay on the outside of the Y bone. And then the tail we're going to take off just like a regular fillet and i think this is a way to get the most boneless fillet going when it comes to pike um, and when it comes to smaller pike too so i just cut down right to the spine
we're cutting through some bones here just following the spine but uh, we can cut those bones out after we have a nice piece of meat there so I just took that top back strap off and now when I'm looking down on the top of the pike you can see little bones right along here and right along there um, so the idea is to cut on the outside of that line of bones don't cut right by the spine so I'm going to cut on the outside of it you can feel that line of bones right along there so I'm going to stay on the outside of that Could hear that me cutting into those bones, so I'm staying just on the outside there. So that's going to be boneless. You see the bones there? So that's kind of the line of bones that I'm trying to stay outside of. That's the Y bone, basically. I'm just kind of using those bones as my guide as I slice downwards. So that is pretty much a boneless piece right there now. I wonder what this guy was eating. Uh oh, seems like something interesting. You wanna to see, Tori? Is it a mouse? No, it's another full fish. Look at the size of this fish in it. What kind of fish? That's what's in it. Surprised this thing was still hungry. Yeah, it looks like, oh, it's a, it's a small catfish, a brown bullhead. Swallowed it whole. Like, I'm surprised the thing was still hungry. Well, I'm going to toss that in the lake. So it could be a snapping turtle's dinner next. So now we have right here this piece. See all the bones along here? Hear them. So now we have a, a piece here. That's pretty bone free. And that's like, you know, a nice piece of meat right there. So yeah, beauty piece, bone free meat. But I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. So there we have another boneless piece. Now this piece that I cut off the back strap, that's gonna have bones in it for sure. But I can actually go ahead and cut those out too. You lose some meat when you uh, avoid the bones. And now the back, I'm gonna just basically cut off just like, more or less just like a regular fillet the same way that you'd fillet like a bass or a perch or whatever so I'm just basically following the spine with my knife here and this piece will be definitely boneless and this one it's not it's not hard to avoid the bones either so you can see 
Right there, I followed the spine. Got a very nice boneless piece. And for the fifth and final cut, so it's called the five cut method, there's five cuts. I'm gonna do that again. Here you have a nice fillet. So you see, we, we do have this, this bit in between the bones here in between the bones and the spine that is a good amount of meat on it there so yeah we are losing a bit of meat there that's kind of in between these y bones and the spine um if you don't do this technique it's going to be a lot more bonier but you can kind of pick that meat off the bones if you don't get too squeamish but it is just full of bones so that's a great piece to feed your dog unfortunately our husky dog died but uh he would eat that <laughs> So yeah, I'm just going to hike this back in the lake. Okay, so there's our five cuts. One, two, three, four, five. These four are boneless. This is going to have some bones down the middle, but I can take the skin off and I can actually go ahead and uh, cut those bones out as well if I want. I'm probably just going to leave it as is. But the next step, I got to take the skin off too. What you do it is you kind of cut down into it a bit. Just pick, yeah, yeah, push down hard. It's sliding. Don't let her slide. Oh, you lost it. I pinch it with my nails. There you go. Sometimes it's nice to get a little help. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Boom. See. Oh yeah. Nice. Getting free. Look at those slabs. I'm gonna just slice down the side a little. Gotcha. On the inside of the skin. Mm -hmm. First. Uh. Push down on it. You're doing it. it, you're doing it. Look at that okay, piece of meat. Okay, bring it a little closer to you. Okay. Right, like Teamwork always helps. Teamwork makes the dream work. There we go. Tori just held the skin down. And look at that beautiful slab of meat. So look, I'm just going through and I'm just yanking these little Y bones that are in here out. But um, there's kind of the top of the spine here. So if you just slice down on either side of it, you can have a more narrow piece. But basically, this is going to make this piece completely bone free as well. So here we're gonna have delicious spring pike, bone-free, cooked in beer batter. I'm telling you, if you, you, some people say, oh, I don't like pike. I challenge you to try this and tell me you don't like it because it's delish. Go give that a little rinse off. Look at that good amount of meat. Now I'm gonna do the bass. For the bass, I'm gonna do a standard fillet. However, when I fillet bass, um, I have a little technique where I stay on top of the ribs, so I don't cut the ribs out with the fillet and then cut them out afterwards. I stay on top of it. Sometimes you need to flip the, the fish up this way. It takes a little longer, it's a little more challenging, but if you get good at it, if you have a little practice, it works great. So, um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do uh, when I clean the bass, first I kinda like to, uh, I make one cut at the front here, right down to the spine, and then I cut along the top, 
on one side of the spine right to um, right to the tail. I mean, I can't say enough about having a sharp knife as well. Um, and that's kind of like my guide. And then I just start from the tail. And again, I'm just following the spine right here. I'm making sure that uh, the bottom of my knife along the stomach, um, that that stays low, kind of in line with the, uh, with the asshole there. And then I cut right up until I hit the rib cage there. And uh, that's where it kind of gets a little tricky. Then I go back to the top and I slice down to the rib cage. Sometimes I like to kind of cut in, kind of start from the top of the fillet as well. And then I use the rib cage to guide me, really. I'm staying on the outside of the rib cage and I'm cutting kind of down like that. So I'm, I'm not losing any of the meat on top of the rib cage. And then I just cut the fillet off there at the bottom. So yeah, so I've lost uh, none of that meat. You can see right there, there's basically no meat on top of the rib cage, and I have all that meat there still. So basically lose as little as possible and have a truly completely bone free fillet. And then we take the skin off as well. A little easier to take the skin off of, of, of bass than pike. It's not so finicky. There we go. Very beautiful looking fillet. Look at that, look at the uh, the pike meat is almost orangey, eh? Mm -hmm. The meat, bass meat is like 99.9, .9, I've never seen anything other than white meat on a bass, but pike you can get orangey meat, white meat. I've even had just total orange meat on a pike before, it's rare. Um, but the, the meat color is, really depends on its diet and you can catch two fish out of the same area with different color fins. You see it a lot with lake trout. And a lot of the time that just has to do with uh, what the fish has been eating. So again, um, yeah, different fish in the same area will we'll focus on different food. So again, this time, I'm just going to kind of trace it out. Trace out where my cut's going to be. And um, this time I'm actually going to make my kind of tracing cut along the bottom as opposed to on the top, just because I'm right-handed and uh, it's, it's easier that way. Um, you can actually kind of trace your cut on both the uh, upside and the low side, or neither side, but I find it definitely makes that cut easier if you kind of just um, put a guiding cut in there to begin with. And again, I'm just following the spine right to the rib cage. There's the rib cage. And I'm gonna flip it, staying along the spine, and I cut top here down to the rib cage and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side I'm going to cut that meat um, right off the top of the rib cage I'm just almost holding the fish up like this, just cutting down, sticking, pushing the side of my knife against the rib cage. And there again, you see how I have no meat lost on top of the rib cage. It's all here. And then I'm just going to skin this fillet too. Here we go. Here we got two beauty clean fish. So I'm just gonna take those down, rinse them off in the lake. And the next step is preparing our batter, heating up some oil, 
cooking them up and then eating particularly uh my favorite spot uh, part of the whole process um catching eating probably first and catching are very very close uh this not the most fun spot part of the process but definitely a mandatory part there's a big old pile of meat Beer. And batter. Oil. Uh, beer batter. We got the Fish Crisp brand beer batter from Magnetowan Bait and Tackle. $6.99. More expensive than the Knorr or Knorr brand. But it's better, you know? And I don't know why, but whenever I just make beer batter out of like flour and what have you, it's just never as good. But you can just literally make this stuff. You know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Because you can rest it right in there. Just like bouncing off the walls, he's like, "We're both ready for number two. And I'm just like, "What? You're like, why though? <laughs> You're like, why? Yep. So like. Well, we're gonna be eating poutine whether you want it or not. Are you kidding me? That looks kind of better than not wanting. Um, we could also just we could also just cook. There's no bones in this. No bones. Wanna give me a chunkaroo? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's like buttery. Mm. Like, whereas I don't feel that scared of, of no. you know? Some people are, though. A mess kit wants to add some new. Yeah. I mean, the fish is really already really well done, you know? So, it's like... Oh, yeah. Alright. So hot. Mmm! Panic, hold on. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Done too. And it's overdone too. That's the bass car. You're gonna have to tell me what you like more. Oh, no, this isn't done yet. Here.
So I'm eating these two um, back straps right now. A couple bones. I tried to cut them out, but thin bones cut the top of the Y bone. So delicious. I don't know if you can see that, but that's why it's called a Y bone. Amazing, amazing feed, and amazing day. But so we went out, explored the lake just with our motorboat, caught a bass and a pike, came back, cooked them up, filled us right up. Bass, trout, catch and cook. We're on Lake Tomogamy here, but of course they work anywhere. So enjoy, get yourself out there. Enjoy a beautiful day in the outdoors and um, always uh, do what you can to conserve our beautiful wild places. This lake is absolutely massive. It's a two hour drive from me and Tori's place. And it's constantly threatened with, um, with logging, road development, mining etc etc but due to the conservation efforts of people like friends of tomogamy people like alex matthias and other people um they've managed to keep it as wild as it still is which is uh amazing and the tomogamy region is a very large area bigger than algonquin park it's the uh, largest area of interconnected waterways in the entire world when you're paddling a canoe in the Tomogamy backcountry, you feel like you're as free as a cowboy on the open plains riding a horse because there's just so many different ways you can take to get to a single place because of all the water that um, uh, it's just unbelievable. You know, uh, it's so many different options um, just with short interconnecting portages or shallow creeks in a canoe here. You can really travel forever. And just Lake Tomogamy itself is massive, so many arms, very interesting lake because so many long arms and bays and back bays that are huge. You could honestly, it would take you a lifetime before you even knew this lake, let alone the back country. So very, very, very cool area, globally significant area. It's got some of the last stands of um, old growth or even virgin forests of uh, eastern red and white pine in the world. And it's the largest area of interconnected waterways in the world. So this area here is globally significant. How cool is that? And me and Tori have it in our backyard, so we feel very, very blessed. Yeah, I'm looking forward now to um, maybe doing a little more fishing and um, cooking up dinner in a couple hours. And There you go. Bass and pike, catch and cook, delicious. Dinner, we just ate some food.